Hi. Uh, I decided to do maybe one or two more NMR problems because apparently my last film didn't work out too well. Um, this is one of the problems from your problem set. It's on page 482. It's problem 1342. I neglected to give you the integrals on a few of these, and the integrals are posted on the last external link that I put up. It's probably like external link 16, I think. Um, but anyway, I've written them in. I've drawn a diagram of the spectrum and written them in. This is the compound C4H7O2Cl. This is the spectrum, and we're going to fill in the table. First of all, doing the unsaturation number, you would say CNH2N plus 2. So it would be C4H2N plus 2 would be 10. Okay, we know oxygen does not change the number of hydrogens in the saturated formula. We proved that in class. Halogen, however, does, and if you'll recall, halogen reduces it by one. So it's C4H9O2Cl. So what chlorine does is chlorine brings the number of hydrogens down by one because chlorine acts like a hydrogen. Okay. The difference here is 2 divided by 2, which equals 1, okay? This means we're missing one pair of hydrogens. Structurally, this is the equivalent of one double bond, one ring, or, well, that's it, one double bond or one ring. No triple bonds, right? A triple bond is the loss of two. Now this is my spectrum. The spectrum is kind of peculiar because it's the, the only case in the pack where there's overlap. This is the overlap of some kind of a splitting pattern with a singlet. So this is a singlet and this is a splitting. Now looking at the splitting, what I think it is just looking at it, is a quartet because it has the proportions of a quartet. So I think you're seeing that outside of a quartet, in other words, I think what you're seeing there is this, and laying on top of it is a singlet. So it's a quartet and a singlet, and I'm going to show how you use that to figure things out. Okay, so let's interpret the spectrum. Oh, another piece of information that's given in the problem is that the compound has a peak at 1740 reciprocal centimeters or wave numbers in the IR. If you look on your IR table, that means the compound has a carbonyl. It's actually a specific type of carbonyl, and you can try to figure that out using your IR table. Now I'm going to fill in our table, okay? First peak is around one part per million. At around one, we have an area of three and a splitting that is a triplet. This means we have a CH3, right? Three identical hydrogens, CH3, next to how many? This means we're next to two, CH2. So we are observing a CH3 next to a CH2, okay? Now if this CH2 really exists, it should show up somewhere else in the spectrum. But the problem is there's overlap in the spectrum. That's what the problem is. But I really believe that's a quartet, okay? Now, think about this. If this is saying you have a group of three that's next to a group of two, there must be a group of two. Therefore, this group of peaks that has an area of four must break down to a group of two and a group of two. I don't know if that makes any sense. Again, this triplet implies that we have a group of two. The group of two must be in here. The area for this is four total. That means that the two groups must break down to two and two. So that's how I'm going to interpret it. Um, so the first thing I run into is the singlet. So at about 3.9, I have an area of 2. It's a singlet. What, how do we interpret that? The way we interpret that is a CH2 group. Okay? At 4.0, I believe we have an area of 2. And it looks like it's kind of like the back end of a triplet, uh, of a quartet. It should be a quartet. So I'm going to say quartet, kind of like question mark. 
Well, how would you interpret that? That would be a CH2 next to a CH3. This is the beauty of NMR. You always get the information twice, okay? So we, if, we, if we think this is here, this really has to be here. So this CH2 is this CH2, this CH3 is this CH3. So now you're finally observing the CH2. Now what kind of pieces do we have? This is what we've got so far, okay? Again, I'm a big advocate of writing down the parts and not attaching them, okay? Don't attach them yet. If you attach them, you get married to them, and you cannot undo it. It's, really, it's just a weird psychological phenomenon with NMR. This is what I know from the NMR. I know there's a CH2 all by itself, and I know there's a CH2, CH3 off somewhere. Then I do my bookkeeping. I look back at my formula. I have accounted for all seven hydrogens. All seven are accounted for. I have accounted for three of the carbons, but there's one carbon left over, there's two oxygens left over, and there's a chlorine left over. So we have a lot of work to do here. This tells us we have a carbonyl. We know we have a carbonyl. So I can get rid of one of these C's and one of these O's and say, I know I have a carbonyl. So that, that really, the IR is really helping us a lot. Okay, so I tell people, I always tell people to think about whether things are internal or they're terminal, okay? That means, are they at the beginning of the chain or at the end of the chain? Are they the ends of the chain or are they the middle of the chain, okay? This piece here is a terminal piece. This piece is an internal piece because it has two connections on it, okay? Chlorine is a terminal piece, okay? Oxygen and this carbonyl are internal. Now the question is, what order do we put them in? Well, something that's very telling is that this CH2 and this CH2 are right on top of each other. So both of these have to be very close to electronegative atoms, but they can't have too much electronegativity. So really, probably the best way to attach this, you can try different things, but the best way to attach this is Cl, CH2, next to a carbonyl, O, CH2, CH3. Now you could try other combos. For example, supposing you decided to do this, I'm just showing you another combination. Okay, when you draw something, you should criticize it. Okay, like say I drew this as my first example. If you looked up on an NMR table, it would tell you that a hydrogen on a carbon next to a chlorine would be at about three to four parts per million. A hydrogen on a carbon next to an oxygen would also be at about three to four parts per million. That would put these hydrogens probably down above six parts per million. That's a problem. These hydrogens on a carbon next to a carbonyl should be at about two parts per million, and they are not. They're down around four. That's why this works better. I'm using the electronegativity of the oxygen to shift these down or put these at four parts per million. This being near a chlorine and near a carbonyl, farther away from a carbonyl, should shift it down to maybe four to five, okay? So this is a, the best combination, and this example also shows how you use um, the positions of the peak to resolve the spectrum. But mainly I wanted to explain to you this business of these peaks being overlapping. The best thing you can do is write some ideas down and criticize them, okay? So I hope this helps a little bit. I'll see you in class. If you're still having trouble, pop in next week. Thanks.